morning. <clears throat> you know, as of yesterday afternoon, none of us would have imagined that today will be the kind of service that we're going to have today. Who would have thought that this morning, instead of a, a brand new series that we are launching, we're having a, a grieving service. <clears throat> Shock, disbelief, devastated, deeply deeply saddened. I think these words are potentially some of the words that we go through, I went through, when we received the news. I was in Every Nation Church Satapa yesterday evening and we were about to start our prayer meeting when I received a WhatsApp from Theresa asking us to pray that Pastor Tim has collapsed and on the way to the hospital. And like many of you, we prayed. We prayed in the prayer meeting. We speak life. We ask God to intervene. <clears throat> as, most, as most of you know by now, Pastor Tim, our beloved Pastor Timothy, has gone to be with the Lord yesterday evening. As of 7.57 p.m. To be honest, we're all still digesting the news. To be honest, this morning, <clears throat> when I woke up, I kind of wished that it was a bad dream. And to be honest, as we gathered yesterday, the family members were there the leaders, some of the pastoral team were there. We were all lost for words. What do you say? That's okay. I think in times of grief, in times of that we don't know what to say, we can worship. Today, whether you are new, Oh yeah, you have been with us for a long time. Thank you for joining us today. But we want to look to God to worship. And then we want to share a little bit. Look into some scriptures, pray, and worship again. So I want to invite all of us to stand to our feet. Let's look to God. In times of grief, in times of the feeling of lostness, we can worship. Pastor Neil, over to you. When peace like a river, when peace like a river. 
So 
Hallelujah. God, indeed, Lord, we want to fix our eyes on you. God, even as we worship, as we pray, God, Lord, we put our trust upon you, Lord. God, Lord, you comfort us. You bring peace to us, Lord. Father, Lord, you give us strength, Lord. Father, as we grieve, as we remember Pastor Timothy's life and his impartation to every single one of us, Lord, God, I pray, Lord, for peace, for strength, for comfort, Lord. In Jesus' name. You know, that song was one of Pastor Tim's favorite songs. Every time when we are asked to, what song shall we sing? It's always, the Lord is one. I'm going to read a portion of scripture. You can go ahead and take a seat. Later on, we'll continue in worship. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. This is the verse that is key verse of our series, and Pastor Timothy is supposed to preach this verse today. And I'm reading to you. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body 
be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I like this. I like this promise. I like this encouragement that Apostle Paul had when he was writing to the Christians in this church to encourage them to stand firm, to encourage them that God is faithful. In verse 24, it says, He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. God who is faithful, who called us, He will surely do it. Do what? To make us whole. To sanctify us completely. And He says that the God of peace Himself. You know, today, even as, as a church, we grieve as a spiritual family. We can hold on to this verse that the God of peace Himself will be with us. Our immediate thoughts and prayers goes to the family, Teresa, Joel, who is on the way back, Joash, Jaden, Joanna, Auntie Lo, PC, Pastor Kel, Eugene and the family, Shark, our immediate thoughts and prayer goes to them. And I encourage all of us as we pray for them, we pray that the God of peace Himself will make them complete. Wherever we lack strength, God Himself will give us strength. Wherever we need that comfort, that healing, God Himself will bring that comfort and healing. For where we need direction, wisdom, a father figure, a brother, a son, God Himself will make that whole, will make that complete for the family. Even as we pray later on, we pray that the God of peace Himself. To me, Pastor Timothy, <clears throat> I've counted, I've known him for 27 years when I was a college student, when I was running away from God. But because of His love for God, His love for people, He ran after us. 27 years and got to know Him. And I remember, as a student, He will tell me this. He says, do not limit what God can do through you. And He believed in me even when I didn't really believe in God. And that's the kind of man he is. To me, he's a spiritual father, my pastor, my leader. <clears throat> my mentor, my friend. I serve alongside him. I serve under his leadership for 20 years. And like many of you, I'm sure, he has made many impacts and imprints in each and every one of your life. And he has definitely made such a huge impact in the lives of myself and my wife. He officiated our wedding. He believed in me and sent me out with a blessing to plant Every Nation Church Damansara many years ago. Even in his busy schedule, he would still make time to call me. And every time when he calls me, I know that he is driving. The countless texts. Even up to last Friday evening, we were texting to discuss about the message that he is supposed to preach today. We had many meals together, many trips together. We went to Wheaton College together, rushed our assignments together. But most of all, most of all, I'm most thankful to Pastor Tim because he is a godly role model. In an era where There is not lack of gifted and capable pastors and leaders. He demonstrated 
he displayed, he lived out what it means to be someone with humility, with a heart for God, with a genuine heart for God and genuine heart for people, with integrity. with such big-heartedness. And I thank God for that, that we have Pastor Timothy's life and his legacy that shines forth, not just for us, but for the Christian world, for our Every Nation movement, for churches in Malaysia. He will always say yes, to serve and to be a blessing to the different bigger body of Christ. Yesterday, he was preaching in a new church plant in Aradamansara. And he told me the day before, I found out that, wow, you are preaching there and you are doing leaders meeting for them. I said, wow. And he says, yes, I want to serve them and I want to do this for them. So it's not just a big loss to us, but also to, I believe, Malaysian churches. I look back at some of our pictures, I look back at some of our <coughs> WhatsApp messages, and I'm sure sitting here, many of you will be able to recall maybe a, a memorable meeting some over meals, some over durian, some over badminton, some over his house. Maybe some of you will recall a particular conversation, a particular WhatsApp messages, or your last meeting or your last conversation with him. I want to give some time for us to just recall and remember that memory, that conversation, that meeting. And imagine today, what would He say to you? And what would you want to say to Him? Maybe I can give about three minutes for everyone. You can close your eyes. You can check back your last messages with Him for some of you who had personal interaction with Him. You can think back something that he said on the pulpit in a class, in dialogue, his sayings, his instructions, his frameworks, his prayer, his heart for people. Let's just take some time, all of us, just recall your memory with him. Just begin to recall what He said to you and what He will say to you.
dear God, even as we grieve today, we want to recall that conversation, that meeting, that words of wisdom. Some of us are conversations that are so defining that it turns us towards God. Some of us are conversations that unlocked us from our comfort zone to step up to live a bigger life. Some of us is a conversation that saved our marriage. Whatever it is, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us such a great man You know, this picture <clears throat> was taken in the church that he was preaching in by the pastor and was preaching this. And this will be his last message preached. And the question is, what is our main thing? We can see it on the slides, right? And I think if you have interact with him, if you have been here long enough, you will have known what is our main thing. There is a verse there, Matthew 28, that speaks about go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always. And that was his last message that he preached. He had dialogue and during the and after the dinner fellowship I was told he was still joking he was still laughing in fact when I look back at some of our texts in the chat preparing for service today he was still texting the group at 6 plus p.m. but when he collapsed there were three doctors present that they were able to immediately perform CPR and efforts to revive him. And the three doctors took turns for about 20 minutes before the ambulance came. And then the effort continued on in the ambulance to the hospital and it continued on. So all in all, I think the effort to revive Pastor was maybe about 45, 50 minutes. But I think our Lord loved him more. Back to his last message. And he modeled this for us. One life at a time. One text at a time. One call at a time. And that's the reason why a lot of us are here today. And I always remember one of his words of wisdom to me. It's really about his relationship with his children. And he always tell me, Sean, you got to talk to your kids. You got to engage with them. You got to process things with them. You got to talk to them. And there's so many more. Last Tuesday in our pastoral meeting, he wrote it on the board, right? And he was talking to us and he says that he really believes that God has called every nation and the next chapter, and he sees gener generational, the different generation, the next generation. He sees generational. He sees missional 
the key to unlock the unchurched world powerfully. And he wrote relational stroke personal. You would have known that he is such a personal, relational, and he's big in personal, relational, and he wrote there, relational, stroke, personal. And he wrote geographical. And he was sharing with us last, just last Tuesday. And the, 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 the mandate or what he sees where God is leading the church to be And he encouraged us. He says, let's lead this way. Later on, we'll pray. But I thought before that, maybe we can sing another song. You can stand, you can sit. It's up to you. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. 
Yes, Lord. God, it is in this attitude of worship. I want to invite all of us to remain standing as we want to pray. And I've invited a couple of um, pastors to pray alongside with us. Um, I want to like to invite Pastor Victor. Pastor Victor is a dear friend uh, of Pastor Timothy. Uh, and he'll share a little bit. He'll, he'll say a few words. And we want to uphold uh, the family in prayer. Pastor Victor. Please be seated. This is going to be the hardest prayer in my entire life. And I always will live, I probably will live with this regret in my life. Because I was supposed to see your Pastor Tim on a Friday night. And I know he's preaching in another church on a Saturday night. It's a young church, Pastor, Pastor Andy's church, Generation Church. So we say, hey, why don't we be a blessing to this small, young church? So Tim, you preach first. And after you preach, you have dinner. And after dinner, I will appear. And together, let's do something for this church. And so I was on my way there and after dinner, Pastor Andy called and said, Pastor Vic, don't come to church. Go straight to the hospital. I said, what happened? As Pastor Sean have said, he collapsed and there were three doctors and I will leave it to say that another day, try to revive him. It's not a very pretty sight at the hospital when you see the ambulance al arrive and you see the medics trying to revive him. And my wife Kelly asked me, would you have seen him on Friday night? And my reply to her was this, that I think it's going to be a big regret in my life. On Saturday night, we were supposed to talk about many things, but I want you to know that the irony of the whole thing is this, Pastor Tim didn't collapse in this church, he collapsed in someone else's church, and that is your pastor, he's always blessing somebody else, he died in somebody else's church, that is a picture for all of us to know and to remember that every nation doesn't exist just for Puchong but for other people around us. I, I wrote a book not too long ago entitled Unspoken Words, Thoughts to a Dying Friend. And in one of those chapters that says, My Jubilee Checklist, this is what I wrote. I've been thinking very hard, what would it be like to celebrate my 50th birthday? 
how should I make it meaningful, memorable for myself? So I decided to embark on a one-year journey to do 50 things for my 50th year. And last night, as I looked through all the 50 things, three of that really stood out to me. One of it says that I'm going to preach a sermon in every nation church entitled, The Journey of Transition. And the next thing I wrote was this. I'm going to double date with Pastor Tim and Teresa. We had a great time. And the 50th thing I wanted to do for my 50th birthday is this. I say I want to do my living funeral. Experience what it is like to plan for your own funeral. And on the 5th of November, 2017, right here on this stage, I did my living funeral. And I have my best friend, Pastor Tim, to be with me on this stage. And at the same time, we also celebrated his 50th birthday. And it's so uncanny and such an irony that this coming week, I'm going to attend his funeral on the very same church. Much more to be said, much more I think he wanted me to say, but I will leave it for another day. And let me pray right now for the family. You can remain seated and I'll pray for the church. Dear Lord, this is the church that Pastor Tim loves. This is the church that Pastor Tim builds. A church he calls home, a church he calls family. This is the church he taught us to belong, to believe, to become. Every Nation Church Malaysia is where his heart is. His heart stopped so that ours will continue to beat strong with the love of God for one another and for the world. His last sermon shall be our first reminder. His final speech, what is our main thing, is both an invitation and a challenge. An invitation to always love God and a challenge to always love people. His final finale verse in Matthew 28, 20, the Great Commission, and behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age. Indeed, is an assurance that even in His absence, Lord, You are with us. Lord, His memory and His legacy will indeed be with us always. And whenever we think of Pastor Tim, that memory will spur us to be a better version of ourselves in Christ. Pastor Tim's love, compassion, patience, wisdom, humor, endurance, diligence, and fatherly heart is a reflection of God, you to us. On this stage, He opens your word when our hearts are closed. On this stage, He shares His family and stories to give us hope. On this stage, He brings laughter to our gloomy soul. On this stage, He ignites hope to help us to see a better world. He invites us to discover God in all your splendor and wonder. And that God, You are knowable, You are lovable, and you are trustworthy. We will miss Him, O oh Lord, on this pulpit, but we will cherish Him in our hearts. Lord, bless every Nation Church Malaysia as we move on to the next chapter. Guide the pastors and the leaders to keep growing and serving. And as we spread Your love to see more lives transform, may we always remember there once lived a wonderful pastor and though he is gone, his energy, his passion lives on in us. Each of us is a beautiful piece of his story because his story is a story of Jesus. So Lord, while we grieve together 
as a church, may joy come in the morning. May we see the dawn of a new beginning. When a good man dies, many more shall rise to take his place and fly the flag of every nation wherever we are. Be with every nation church Malaysia today and tomorrow. Be with us even as we go through Every Nation 2.0 and all the 14 congregations that He has planted as we look forward to that day when there will be a happy reunion where we will see Pastor Tim again and say, Thank you, Pastor Tim. You brought heaven to earth for us. You guide us from earth to heaven for Jesus. Our faces are not just drenched with wasted tears. Our faces are shimmering with the glow of Jesus. And all glory be to God. All praise be lifted to His name. God bless every nation, church, Malaysia. And Father, we commit Teresa and the entire family into your hand. The Lord, you too will be with them. The Lord says to you, Teresa, that you have not lost a husband. But Teresa, you have gained an entire nation that's going to surround you. And at the mention of his name, the name of Jesus will be praised. The destiny of every one of your child, as spoken before, will come through. And every one of them will live for the glory of God. So on behalf of friends around Malaysia, on behalf of my family, we just want to bless you, Teresa and the whole family, to let you know that we can only grieve with you and we will live another day to uncover every other chapter that is left unsaid. So Lord, we thank you for this moment. And as we continue to grieve, God, just be with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Vic. I want to invite Pastor Jason, Agape, Pastor Eugene, Pastor Agape to be as we pray. I've asked the different pastors to pray for the different things that resonate with the heartbeat of Pastor Tim. Jason. I remember Pastor always telling me, Jason, I believe you and your team have what it takes to bring the next generation to the next level. I didn't know what that meant. But with that statement, well, it took me in. And again, he said the same statement, Jason, I believe you and your team have what it takes to bring the next generation to the next level. Again, I didn't know what that meant. But with that statement, he, he passed the campus ministry to me. And again, he said the same statement, Jason, I believe you and your team have what it takes to take the next generation to the next level. And you all know, as a church, we invested in the, the three lots nearby, which will eventually be a teens hall, and that hall can sit essentially double of where we are at right now. I told Pastor Pasai, I don't know if we have what it takes. But again, he says, Jason, you and your team, I believe has what it takes. I'm so sad he did not have a chance to see you sit in that hall. And I'm so grateful we have a pastor who really believes in the next generation. 
more than we ever believed in ourselves. I was just thinking to myself, God, how sad it is that a certain didn't get to see us see that dad didn't didn't get to see what he he believed in us. Then I was reminded what Pastor Sean shared just now. How at the recent Tuesday meeting, Pastor was drafting out what he saw in Every Nation 2.0. And he wrote there, next gen. And I just felt this assurance and this affirmation that by faith, Pastor Tim saw. By faith, he saw. He saw the next gen grow. He saw the next gen fill up that space. He saw the next gen making an impact in the larger world. He saw. And now even as we pray, my prayer is that we too will see. We too will see how Pastor Tim, by faith, saw the next gen. So God, today, God, today we come with grieving hearts. God, how I wish there's one more time where I could see Pastor Tim just seated right here in front. Cheering us on, the young preachers on, even as we share the word. How I long to see. And God, I know that will forever stay as a sweet memory. But today, even in view and in light of Pastor Tim's passing, I ask that we as a church will steward his vision for the next generation well. To by faith see what he saw in the young people. And I know a lot of us, we have different vision when it comes to the next generation. Some of us see them as rebellious, weak, or whatever. But I pray we will learn to put on that same lens of faith and love that Pastor Tim had when he saw the next generation. And I pray that it won't just be something that we see, but in the same way Pastor Tim entrusted and empowered the next generation, that will be true for all of us as well that we won't just say we believe in them, but we will truly entrust the future to them. So help us as a church to steward this vision for the next generation well. All this I pray. God, we love Pastor Tim, and we know you love him too. So we entrust him into your loving hands, and we entrust ourselves into your loving hands. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Share, just want to share a few words before I pray. Uh, my last conversation with Pastor Tim was about a wedding that he asked me to do. Obviously, I'm newly ordained, only two years married. I was quite hesitant. So uh, I told Pastor, Pastor, I'm willing to do many things, but are you sure that we're good enough? And his reply, which is his last words to me, I believe in you. I didn't know Jason was going to share that, but it seems like it's a theme. He really believes in us. Uh, this morning, we're speaking to Teresa, you know, what can we do to carry some of your weight? And this is what she replied. The weight of carrying on the call of every nation, a personal, generational, missional, and geographical call. And with that, I want to read a verse uh, in Psalms 37, it says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in Him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with His hand. And I want to read it again prophetically onto our church. The Lord makes firm the steps of every nation, Church Malaysia, when we delight in Him. Though we stumble, it's painful stumble, but we will not fall, for you, Lord, uphold. 
us with your hands. God, we thank you for this legacy that Pastor Tim has left with us. All the people safe, all the work done, all the signs and wonders. We look at this legacy and we want to say, we do not take it lightly. We do not take it lightly at all. God, help us to carry on this legacy, your legacy, Pastor Tim's legacy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yesterday, I felt, I think many of you have felt the same, that you feel like you become a spiritual orphan, that we lost a spiritual father, that was my immediate thoughts. I felt I'm like often. But just want to remind all of us, it is Pastor Team and the family and the church always point us towards God and God the Father first. And He will lead us. We are not alone. We are not often. He will guide us. He will he will give us the next blueprint. We will not be scattered because this is what every nation has taught us. Love God, love people. Then we will know what is next. Lord, our first thing first, we want to pray for everyone, same as me. Suddenly, we feel like there is, there is no one we can text anymore for advice. I pray for comfort. I pray for those that immediate call that can actually call past team. But now, suddenly, do not know who to call. That God, that you comfort this soul. And for those that have WhatsApp app that actually with past team there, any complaints, just shoot there. And Pastor Tim has his way to comfort and help us to see we're in a different lens. Now we got no more, but God, you bring comforts. That help us to fix our eyes on you, help us to fix our hope on you. And Lord, we want to take on the baton about reaching the next generation. We know that it's not just Pastor Tim's heart, but it's your heart. Pastor, Pastor Tim, live it so well. Help us to see that the next generation is so important. I pray that God, that the next wave of the leaders will rise up for the occasion, oh God. We will mourn, we will grieve, but we'll pick ourselves up strong. And we continue the race until we see each other again. Help us to carry this, that kind of burden, that kind of habit to love the people, to love the generation after generation. Everything that we do, not about ourselves, but how can we serve better, which is what Pastor Tim always asks, always asks us to do. Serve people first. Let us carry the attitude, but most importantly, oh God, we we'll focus on you. May you again and again be our Lord, be our Father, be the one that lead and guide us every single de- steps for our next chapter for every nation, Malaysia. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you, pastors. You know, this morning I saw a social media feed of someone who s- sort of paid tribute to Pastor Tim and he said this and I thought it is very true. He says the best way to honour Pastor Timothy is to take heed of his instruction and to continue on his legacy. And I thought that was so true. You know, as we want to come together to the table of the Lord. And t- today we are scheduled to take communion. And I want to read this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he preached 
this verse last weekend in every nation Cheras, in every nation Rimbayu, in every nation Setia Alam. And this was the verse that he ended the message with. And I thought, what a what an appropriate apt verse for us today. I want to invite all of us to stand. If you don't have your communion cup, maybe you can raise your hand so that the ushers can see you. If you don't have communion cup, just raise your hand so that the usher can reach you. Anyone else, just raise your hands. I think there's someone behind up there. Someone down here. <coughs> Let me read the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, it says, When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. You know, as we grieve, as we take time to grieve, we grieve in hope. And we take time to mourn, we mourn with knowing how the story ends. We know that we have the victory. Verse 55, he says, Where or death is your victory? Where or death is your sting? That death is not the end. That we know that one day we will be reunited. We will see but Timothy again. Verse 56, he says, The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But what? But Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 58, I think really sums up the life of our dear pastor. He says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, and I can just imagine him speaking and encouraging this to the audience. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Say stand firm. It says, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. And when I read this verse, I thought, what a word, what a verse to describe our pastor. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. I thank God that we have a pastor that gives himself fully to the work of the Lord. I remember stories that he will share about when he was younger, about hosting missionaries and about that he will say to himself that he will serve God for the rest of his life no matter what his life circumstances will be. And my wife was just reminding me this morning that when she was a young Christian, she remembered this story that my that Pastor Tim preaches about serving God, about doing all that God has for him. And he says that one day when he goes up to heaven, he will be so excited to see the book that God has for the life of Timothy on earth. And he'll be so excited to see that he has fulfilled, he has done, he was faithful. To what God has called him to do. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord will not be in vain. God, we thank you that even as we grieve today, we grieve in hope. Even as we mourn, Lord, we know, God, Lord, 
that in you, we have the victory. God, we thank you. We want to remember the life we want to celebrate. Remember his legacy that he has left to so many of us. And we want to remember his last exhortation last weekend to stand firm. Let nothing move us but what God has called us to do. God, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the body that has been broken for us. We thank you for the blood that has been shed for us. Church, let's partake the bread together. God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you, O God, that there's power in your blood. We thank you, O God, that there's life and life abundantly, Lord. Church, let's partake the cup together. Let me pray. God, we thank you. God, yes, Lord, we are so, so sad. But I know, oh God, Lord, that we can grieve with hope, oh God, Lord, that we can mourn knowing, God, Lord, that victory is on our side. God, even as this week, I pray as we keep the family in prayer, as we keep the church in prayer, Lord, that you would do something in our hearts, God, Lord, that we will take heed of the verse and we will take heed of the legacy and the, and the life that Pastor Tim has left us. And as we come together this week, Lord, for the various wake services, we want to celebrate the life that He has given us. He has modeled for us, Lord. God, we thank you for Pastor Tim. We love him, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say, Amen. You know, earlier some of you are asking for some of the wake details. So we're going to have wake services tomorrow night, 8 p.m., Tuesday night, 8 p.m., and we're going to have funeral service on Wednesday morning. There will be visiting hours as well in the afternoon if you cannot make it at night. As we speak, the different pastors in the every nation world are talking about flying in. In fact, some of them are flying in. So we will see them, some of them, in some of the wake services. And stay tuned, you know, tune into our social media, to our website for any latest update, any other memorial services or meetings. Uh, we are planning uh, as we go along, all right? So this is the official uh, digital. And do refer to our social media for the official digital. Today's service has come to an end. God bless you and I will see you over the next few days as you join us for the wake service. God bless you.